We have, in the past, investigated the still unexplained, now lost, stonewalling technique, now commonly referred to as polygonal masonry. We have described the incredible feat that this technique involved, the mystery of how an ancient civilization once cut and perfectly fitted together these enormous jigsaw puzzles, sometimes comprised of megalithic blocks weighing many tons in weight. However, we have also covered the coalescence of this polygonal technique with another, which has become known as Cyclopea within Italy, with the Cyclopean walls built upon those by those who possess the ability to create polygonal masonry. All but proving that this Cyclopean technique predated that of seemingly more competent polygonal technique. But just how old these techniques are, or indeed the age of these structures themselves, is now lost to history. However, our next area of interest may shed some light on these sites' considerable age, if you consider the evidence that the site itself presents. Known as the Pelasgic Wall, it is located upon a gigantic, once leveled natural rock within the Acropolis of Athens. The wall, during the time of Thucydides, was claimed to have stood several meters high and six meters broad. It surrounded the entirety of the ruin, with a large visible fragment of the original wall, demonstrating this claimed scale still standing and located upon the southern side, close to the original entrance. Yet today, the beveling can be seen, but the wall has all but vanished, with the foundation of the wall laying below several feet of natural sediment buildup, indicative of a tremendous age. Said to have been built by the Pelagians, hence the name given to the wall. Not only does the sediment present at the site suggest a far more tremendous age, but the sheer size of the structure, along with the rock it now sits upon that was entirely leveled at some point within ancient antiquity, all points to an ancient feat far beyond the capability of known ancient Grecians, and just like that of polygonal masonry, predictably can be seen at sites just like that of polygonal which are often surrounded by controversy when it comes to the claim construction and origin of said sites. We logically conclude that these attributions to different groups within known history, easily identified in other locations where these groups never ventured, is solid proof that those who state such false truths know they are indeed being deceptive. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling. The Lama Su, incredible monuments, undoubtedly constructed during an incredible time within human history. Worshipped as celestial beings within ancient Mesopotamian religion, often they bear a human head and a bull's body, although variations exist which have the horns and the ears of a bull, including wings. These anthropomorphic statues appear frequently throughout Mesopotamian art indicating a strong importance to their cultural beliefs. It is now understood that the Lama Su were perceived as household protective spirits within ancient Babylonian belief systems, becoming associated later as royal protectors, which were placed as sentinels at entrances. The reason for our video, however, does not surround the religious importance or indeed cultural history of the Lama Su. Instead, we wish to explore the enormous, inexplicable size, and thus weight, of these incredible ancient statues. How did an ancient people that, according to academia, existed within our own well-studied cycle of development, accomplish the movement and placement of such gigantic stone carvings? If we look at the efforts of Henry Lenard, for example, made within 1847, you soon realize that the mammoth scale and as yet unexplained undertaking the placement of these masterfully decorated stones must have been. After discovering more than half a dozen pairs of these colossal statues, some depicting lions, some depicting bulls, often weighing up to 27 metric tons, Henry Lenard decided that he would attempt to bring two of these smaller artworks weighing in at a mere 10 tons each, to England. However, he found that after an 18-month, painstaking, torturous journey, which included several near-disasters, 
just how incredible the placement of these monuments once were. He eventually succeeded in bringing them to a British museum. Although this involved loading them onto a wheeled cart, lowered with a complex system of pulleys and levers, operated by dozens of men. He initially tried to hook the cart up to a team of buffalo and have their brute natural strength haul the stones, although they refused to move. He then selected a reinforced cart for their transport, which required over 300 men to move it. This was soon realized to be far too hazardous. So he then wrestled with and opted for the decision to load them onto a barge. This required well over 600 goatskins and sheepskins just to keep it afloat. After eventually arriving in London, a custom-built ramp was constructed at great expense just to allow the crew of many hundreds of men to haul them up the steps and into the museum itself. An astonishing and clearly exhaustive exercise, which clearly demonstrates the civilization capable for constructing and placing these statues in their original positions were clearly far more capable than our recent ancestors placed a mere century ago. This dramatic sequence of events is clear indication that the national museums involved in the funding and transport of such exhibits, even back in 1847, were more than aware of the astonishing feats these monuments were, yet are seemingly committed to a conspiracy, which we believed is severely limited in accurate chronological events. Although claimed as Assyrian, dating back as far as the 25th century BC, these monuments, we feel, were clearly reused by this culture, possibly due to their astonishing size. Who carved the Lamassu? How did they move statues weighing nearly 30 tons? We feel that these monoliths were left by a lost, once highly capable, advanced civilization. And as such, we find them highly compelling. We have in the past covered countless incredible and compelling ruins which can be found within Japan, indeed all over the world, upon which we continue to find connecting features which not only suggest there was once a global, ancient, highly advanced civilization, but the chance that these architectural techniques came about at the same time in history, the world over, by coincidence, is so slim that many said features, we feel, can instead only be seen as corroborating evidence of their past existence. Metal clamping techniques, enormous ancient megaliths, false doors, and the as-yet-to-be-fully-understood polygonal masonry techniques have now been discovered the world over, and Japan is of no exception. Along with the polygonal masonry found upon the foundations of many temple sites, there is also the ancient fortresses of Okinawa, which also display the same uncanny ability as other sites globally, constructed of seemingly random-shaped stones perfectly placed atop one another. Katsurin Castle, Zakimi Castle, among many other Gusuku castles or ancient fortresses found upon the Ryuku Islands within Japan, all contain this same ancient masonry technique, exhibiting this now lost knowledge and thus lost civilization's know-how. Although many of the sites are claimed as restorations, any explanation as to how this ancient masonry technique was replicated within modern history remains unexplained. We must then presume that the ancient sites which exhibit this lost technique have remained intact for untold millennia and have subsequently been misdated as constructed within known New World antiquities. Found upon such ancient sites, located within Peru, Egypt, Greece, Turkey, Lebanon, even as far as the notoriously remote Easter Island, these sites all exhibiting the same lost masonry technique. How can we continue to take these discoveries for granted, dismissed by academics, simply due to modern paradigm, absent any logical argument to explain or indeed disregard this proof of a now lost yet once global super-civilization having once been responsible? They must continue to rely on the Bering Strait theory of human migration and ignore any site which is indicative 
of not only earlier construction, but matching characteristics with other sites the world over, which according to said theory, simply could not have been visited by ancient civilizations, long argued as a feat which ancients were incapable of. The evidence which contradicts these claims, however, can be found still in existence upon these ancient sites. How old are the ancient fortresses of Ryukyu Islands, or indeed the other polygonal sites throughout Japan and the rest of the world? Who were responsible for these incredible sites? We feel simply dismissing the evidence which shows they were the work of the same civilization is not only illogical, but is a great example of the ignorance of mainstream funded institutes in regard to a possible lost chapter in human history. It is a journey of discovery which we find highly compelling. Who built the Balevi Mausoleum? There are many, as yet, unexplained ruins which can be found within modern-day Turkey. The temples of Baalbek, the Patera pipelines, among many others, yet the Balevi Mausoleum, like the other most astonishing ancient structures to be found here upon our Earth, are quietly overlooked. It is a monumental ancient structure, located near Saichuk in the Aegean province of Izmish. It is the second largest ancient mausoleum in Anatolia, which, predictably, academia contends as a tomb, dated from the Hellenistic era around the 3rd century BC. However, like many other of the wondrous ancient structures to be found within antiquity, it contains astonishing, precise, as yet unexplained architecture, indicative of a lost knowledge, thus lost civilization. The Balevi Mausoleum has seemingly survived the eons, still possessing an array of compelling features, which fly in the face of current academic explanation. How did an ancient civilization, even if, as academia claims, was placed a mere 2,000 years ago, accomplish such precision within the stonework? Or indeed, accomplish such precision in the placement of such enormous ancient stones? It is known as a tomb, because like many of the other structures that were clearly of an astonishing nature at earlier times within history, were undoubtedly chosen by leading individuals as their place of burial. With the ruler of the Seleucid dynasty, Antiochus II Theos, his nickname, meaning God, was given to him by the residents of Miletus. Antiochus II died in 246 BC. This body, and indeed his rather modern legacy, has allowed academia to claim a date to the construction. However, the advanced precision techniques involved in its original build are, fortunately, still clear for all to see. Indeed, the Balevi Mausoleum could have once been the burial site of an important person. Yet we feel that this original individual dates from a time far before anything academia would ever permit the admittance of. The chamber, or sarcophagus of the mausoleum, precisely carved from solid rock, had a square plan with a length of 29 meters and a height of 10 meters. From the outside, the rock obscuring the mausoleum was covered with marble slabs. The marble was traced to a quarry in the vicinity of Ephesus. Yet to complete the decorations of the mausoleum, up to 2,500 cubic meters of marble had to have once been excavated. There was also once a second level, surrounded by 28 columns, although over the eons, this has virtually turned to dust. When completed, it would have formed a steep pyramid with a statue crowning its top. Who built the Balevi Mausoleum? Was it once an elaborate ancient tomb? If so, who was buried there? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Tokyo's Imperial Palace Home of the Japanese Emperor and a place which holds many secrets. Some it seems hidden in plain sight for countless centuries. For many years people have visited this marvelous building and the perfectly kept grounds it is placed within. What is interesting regarding its historical history is the fact that much of it is hidden and yet to be told. 
The oldest historical accounts for the palace date back to 1457 AD, when a great warrior known as Ido Shigetsugu built the castle Ido on the site. Ido's clan would perish in the 15th century as a result of uprisings in the Kanto and Ota Dokan regions of Japan. However, what is interesting regarding the palace's construction is its foundations, including the exterior wall, which many now believe was already in existence before the castle's construction, and also the reason the site was chosen all those years ago by the warrior Ido himself. The construction techniques visible in the original construction are clearly evidence of highly advanced building techniques, completed by a clearly highly advanced civilization. And these methods used within the foundations were not replicated throughout the more recent structure, as if forgotten between builds. Additionally, a piece of artifactual evidence was recently covered, a highly compelling building technique which unquestionably links many ancient sites to one another found all over the world, showing an intercontinental sharing of building knowledge many millennia ago. Known as the missing metal clamps, their carved seats still present upon many of the most ancient stonework at the palace, eroded away metal clamps used to keep the stones firmly in place as they settled over the following years after construction. Present at countless sites across the world, a technique somehow shared worldwide only differing from country to country in their process of manufacture. The evidence to suggest that the Palace of Japan is in fact built upon a far older and possibly once far more spectacular structure seems overwhelming. Yet questions remain, most obvious of which, who built the structure to begin with? When did they build it? And what was its purpose? Thankfully, the more we understand regarding the perplexing techniques used by this elusive, yet clearly once highly advanced civilization, the more of these ruins we are seemingly spotting, allowing for their study and subsequent preservation before lost forever. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Bazda Cave within modern day Turkey is unquestionably an astonishing place. An enormous cave system that many people simply assume is a natural formation with select areas quarried out, subsequently used to build numerous ruins throughout the area. However, what many people have seemingly overlooked, and we presume funded academics have deliberately ignored, are the signatures left all over the stonework throughout the network of caverns, strongly indicating that this huge complex was once, somehow, hewn by ancient man. Also, and perhaps most intriguingly, is that this task was completed using a number of different advanced tools, whose marking, thanks to ours and others' astute research, has also been found scarred upon many other ancient sites, some located far away from this enigmatic cave system. The stone, once quarried out to create this enormous cavern, subsequently located as having been used to create a number of remarkable precision-cut monuments including a once existing wall which surrounded an ancient site known as Hiron. Additionally, due to the realization of this quarried stone having been used in Hiron, in addition to our own previous research, we have successfully linked Bazda to yet more ancient ruins, all dated to vastly different eras within history. Thanks to our channel's creator possessing a photographic memory, we have correlated undeniable characteristic similarities, connecting many of these ancient sites throughout the world. Firstly, the signatures left by advanced stone-cutting technologies, tool marks left upon the cave system's walls. Scars upon the stonework, which are present at many other sites, Baalbek in Lebanon, Petra in Jordan, Yangshan Quarry within China, and at least two rock-cut monuments within India the roof of a precision-cut cave, and an unfinished temple known as Veduvan Coil. This crescent-shaped scarring, often of an overlapping fashion, we feel, is reminiscent of scars left by modern-day tunnel boring equipment. Yet due to the lack of in-depth research surrounding such anomalies, with these tool marks, as far as we are aware, only receiving limited attention at Baalbek and merely photographed at Yangshan, have begun to name such markings ourselves 
in an effort to categorize and identify such curiosities being discovered worldwide, with these now known to us as crescent cup and ring marks. The second form of scarring, found upon much of the cave's roof, now known to us as groove and ridge markings, are distinctly different in form and appearance to the crescent cup and ring marks. These rows of grooved scars, however, are identical to those found in plain sight upon the unfinished obelisk located within Aswan Quarry, Egypt. A stone monument well over a thousand tons in weight which has long been academically argued as having been abandoned where it lay, due to a fault line discovered during the quarrying process. However, interestingly, others have presented strong evidence that this crack appeared later within history. A fellow alternative researcher, Chris Dunn, argues within his book Advanced Technology in Ancient Egypt that the crack happened later on in the obelisk's life and that the monolith was abandoned before the fault appeared. Backing up his claim, he shows that details upon the monument were being engraved over the top of the location of the fault line, an undertaking that would have clearly been illogical. Although he does not put forward a postulation as to why this crack occurred, we believe it may have been due to a shift in the surrounding geography, more than likely a ground-shifting earthquake not only cracking the obelisk, but possibly due to and accompanied by a cataclysmic event, which quite possibly caused the demise of the civilization, who were liberating the obelisk, thus leaving it unfinished. But I digress. Our focus is upon the scars left by enigmatic, clearly advanced stone-cutting tools, preserved with clarity upon the erosion-resistant granite of the obelisk. These exact markings also undeniably litter the ceiling of the Bosda cave. Additionally, these groove and ridge marks are also found upon the megalithic, often polygonal stonework within Peru, at Cusco, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, to name but a few. The third set of signature scarring upon the cave stone walls links Bosda cave to another similarly gigantic artificially created cave system, known as Longyu Caves, located within China. Once an undoubtedly immense excavation, yet the quarried stone from this undertaking has never been located. Millions of tons of stone seemingly vanished from the face of the earth. However, thankfully, the quarried stone from the Bosda cave systems, as mentioned, was utilized and located. However, the civilization responsible for shaping these quarried stones at Haran were unquestionably responsible for several other sites found around the world. YouTube channel New Earth, first linking these curiously shaped stones to Nimrod's fortress on Mount Hermon with Jerash in Jordan, with us continuing this trail of connecting ancient dots, thankfully due to the uniqueness of stonework. Let's compare the Nimrod fortress with this uh, historic city in Jordan, which according to mainstream sources was conquered by the Romans and they built their typical Roman architecture consisting of columns and so on on the top of the older ruins. So here they are assuring us that the Nimrod style large blocks are pre-Roman. Now, those very same blocks, when they are in Baalbek, they are telling us it's Roman. In the Temple Mount, they are again assuring us that they are some 2000 years old. In Bosnia, they are telling us they are whatever, three or more thousand years old, and of course they are built by some obscure, unknown tribe of which even the name they had to fabricate. Enabling us to link the royal Kurgan in Crimea to New Earth's discoveries 
And now, to the ancient ruins of Haran in Turkey. Not only can we argue that this cave system was indeed man-made, but is the only site we know of that possesses such an array of these enigmatic stone-cutting technology scars, allowing us to successfully link it to at least 15 ancient sites around the world. The cave itself, Basran, Haran, Baalbek, Petra, Jerash, Yangshan, Longyu, Vetavan Coil, Malmala Param, Cusco, Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, Nimrod's Fortress, and the Royal Kurgan. Possibly many others we are yet to recognize. In conclusion, the vast array of different, as yet unidentified, advanced stone cutting equipment scars present within the cave, each leaving its own unique signature upon the stone. The shaping of these stones, unique to an unknown civilization's signature handiwork, found worldwide, used within an array of as yet unexplained ruins, academically claim to be of vastly different ages and the work of vastly different cultures. We find it not only clear evidence of academic fallacy, but incredibly compelling.